all screwed up at work at one time or another. You know what I'm talking about. When you bugger something up so bad, you pull a face like this. You hope that no one will notice, but when you're a pro wrestling announcer, yeah, you don't have that luxury. If you think Michael Cole has got it easy, yes, he's a knobhead, but regardless, think again. I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture, and these are 10 times wrestling announcers really f- messed up. Number 10. Coach confuses Kane for The Undertaker. By his own admission, Jonathan Coachman's 2018 WWE return, it wasn't great. The ex-ESPN host had never been brilliant on the call, but most reasons that he'd had some decent third-wheel banter behind Michael Cole and Corey Graves on programming. And then, the roar on the 26th of March happened. Coach totally lost his bearings during a heated battle between John Cena and Kane. At one point, following a show of strength from JC, Coachman remarked that it was amazing John could pick somebody like The Undertaker up so easily. This might not have been as bad had the announcers left it there. Cena was wrestling Taker a few weeks later at WrestleMania 34, after all. Instead, Cole deadpanned that Kane was the one in the ring and not Mark Calloway. Flustered and likely a tad embarrassed by his mistake, Coach fell silent before stammering his way through the rest of the match. His confidence has been knocked and his credibility took a kicking live on air. Number 9. The entire Royal Rumble 2011 team. Cole wasn't so quick to notice something seven years earlier, though. During the 2011 Royal Rumble, Alex Riley slipped during a spot with Cena and Kofi Kingston, and the NXT protege failed to hold onto the ropes as planned and was thus eliminated from the match. Both Cena and Kingston stared at one another with a look that clearly said, Oh, bollocks. What do we do now? On commentary, Cole, Jerry Lawler, Matt Stryker and guest announcer The Miz continued talking up Riley's cleverness as a reason why Miz had decided to mentor him the prior year. They did this for an alarming amount of time before someone finally spotted that Alex wasn't in the ring anymore. Whoops. Christ knows how the foursome missed Riley's accidental elimination. The rumble had ground to a halt when it happened and Cena's facial expression alone told the world that the bout's format had just been buggered. Pay attention, guys. Number 8. Adnan Verk has a rough night. There is a reason why Adnan Verk lasted only one month in the job. If that sounds unduly harsh, then apologies. Verk's official reason for leaving WWE this past May was family reasons and issues with the schedule. There may be truth to that, but Adnan's six weeks on play-by-play for Raw didn't really cut it either. His debut appearance on the 12th of April episode was a pressure-filled evening. WWE were 24 hours removed from WrestleMania 37 when Verk pulled on the headset and did his able best next to Corey Graves and Byron Saxton. Why Tom Phillips got the boot, I'll never understand. Put some goddamn respect on his name. Anyway, the banter was stilted immediately and things got worse when Adnan got several names and moves totally wrong. He combined the Viking Raiders into one by referring to both as Eric Ivar and then called them the Viking Express. To be fair, they've changed their name bloody loads. Worse, Adnan began ad-libbing a few other things and it became obvious that Graves and Saxton were on damage control. Burke's lack of product knowledge was clear and Jimmy Smith took over before he could say future endeavours. Number seven, Mike Adamley forgets Jeff Hardy's name. Ah, Mike Adamley. Yes, he brought us the championship scramble, but he was a nightly train wreck of bloopers. Adam Lee's first major gaffe came during an inset promo at the 2008 Royal Rumble. When hyping the upcoming WWE title match, the bumbling stick man referred to Jeff Hardy as Jeff Harvey. Time seemed to stand still before Adam Lee then corrected himself by getting Hardy's surname correct, but the damage at that point was done. Other errors included Mike forgetting what the ring ropes are called and ad-libbing the Samoan Bulldog as a new nickname for Omaga. That didn't catch on and neither did Adam Lee's work with the promotion. He just didn't get it from day one. But we'll always have his line about Kofi making him crazy though, eh? Number 6. Michael Buffer fluffs Bret Hart's name... Twice. Ring announcers aren't safe here either. Michael Buffer's rich voice and shouts of, Let's get ready to rumble! added so much credibility to WCW main events during the 90s. His calls made pay-per-view headliners feel like a big deal. So one can only imagine the annoyance backstage when Buff 
fudged Bret Hart's name not once, but twice. Yes, twice. Buffer hyped up Bret's achievements and called him the master of the sharpshooter before a match with DDP on the 28th of October 1998 episode of Nitro. Weirdly, despite reading from cue cards, the announcer then finished his spiel by calling the legend Bret Clark. Months later, whilst announcing a match on the 4th of February 1999 edition of Nitro, Buffer said the winner would go on to Super Brawl and face Bret Hitman, you guessed it, Clark. Hart's face on the October 98 show was a picture. He'd come to expect this sort of thing from WCW. Number five, Bobby Heenan gets flustered. There may never be a better colour analyst than Bobby Heenan. The brain was quick-witted, always on, and knew exactly what to say. He was rarely lost for words. And that's why he's on this list. At WCW's Clash of Champions 32 special, Bobby lost his cool when Brian Pillman approached him from behind and grabbed his collar. What the f*** are you doing? Asked Heenan. Swearing was a strict no-no on the corporate promotions programming, but Bobby was genuinely flustered by Pillman's antics. He didn't even know that the loose cannon was the one grabbing him. He'd been watching the monitors rather than paying full attention to his surroundings at ringside. Eric Bischoff had a good laugh about this incident on his 83 Weeks podcast by noting that, well, anything can happen on live TV. He sympathised with Bobby, but realises that using the word flip, let's say for now, on WCW telly in 1996, wasn't going to make Turner's sponsors very happy. Number four, Jim Cornette's NWA outburst. Oh dear. First and foremost, it is important to state that there is zero excuse for racial insensitivity, like ever. Jim Cornette, a relic of wrestling's past, really should have known better when he spewed this unsavoury line on an episode of NWA Power in 2019. Cornette put Trevor Murdoch over as mad, bad and dangerous. That was fine. Then he said that Trev was the only man he knew that can strap a bucket of fried chicken on his back and ride a motor scooter across Ethiopia. That obviously was not, and Twitter instantly went berserk over Jim's call. The NWA were left with no choice but to come to terms on Cornette's release. He resigned in the end, and the company apologised for any offence caused. Number three, JR's WWE Dynamite. Some mistakes are worse than others. Getting a wrestler's name wrong isn't quite in the same ballpark as racist commentary, for example. Everyone has a brain fart or two in life. The best of all time isn't exempt from that either. Even the great Jim Ross messes up. Good old JR isn't a great fit for AEW's product in 2021. Critics would point to a mistake in February as proof of that. There, Jim called Kenny Omega the reigning... WWE champion and social media was all over it. In late June, Ross followed that up by closing the show with, there is nothing in your life that will top seeing a live WWE Dynamite. Ouch. JR has since apologised for these oversights and revealed that he received death threats from morons because of them. That is inexcusable, of course. He just called both mistakes untimely errors, but said he wouldn't quit over them. Good for you, JR. Number two, Michael Cole botches WrestleMania 37. The closing spot at WrestleMania is WWE's most critical all year. It is vitally important that the pay-per-view goes off air with a booming call from the announcers, fireworks and all sorts of ballyhoo. Vince McMahon demands that, so the boss must have been fuming at Michael Cole's blunder towards the end of Bianca Belair versus Sasha Banks this past April. Belair hit her KOD finish on Banks for the match-winning pin, and bizarrely, Cole yelled, and a kick out! A kick out from Sasha! Even though the referee had counted to three. The match was over, but nobody told Michael. Corey Graves had to save the day by interrupting, no, she won. Cole's probably wanted the ground to swallow him up at that point. He'd blown Bianca's SmackDown Women's title win and the final piece of the night's soundtrack. Graves and others, like Vic Joseph, leapt to Cole's defence on Twitter, but some critics were having none of it. They were seriously annoyed by his lapse in concentration. Could be worse, I suppose. Number one, Tony Schiavone 
Boost Raw Ratings. Yep, here it is, folks. On the 4th of January 1999 edition of Nitro, WCW announcer Tony Schiavone quipped that nobody should change the channel over to WWF Raw. Why? Well, Mick Foley, who wrestled here at one time as Cactus Jack, Tony said, is going to win their world title. He then followed that up with, huh, that's going to put some butts in seats. Instantly, an estimated 600 thousand households switched over to see Mankind grab his first WWF championship on a pre-taped Raw. WCW's dismissive remark had been, uh, to say the least, counterproductive, and that swayed the night's ratings war in Vince McMahon's favour. Shivani was only acting under instruction from Eric Bischoff, to be fair. What a screw-up, though. Tony's call teased that something major was happening elsewhere, and fans left Nitro to check it out. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Let us know in the comments section below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And subscribe to What Culture Wrestling on either iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts from, for daily wrestling podcasts. Plus, you can let us know your thoughts on Twitter at What Culture WWE. You can find me on there at Adam Wilborn. Thanks for watching. I've been Adam from What Culture, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>